Our next speaker from the College of Engineering, Department of Civil Engineering, is Mohamed Ishfaq. The title of his talk is Bridge Strengthening for a Better America. Welcome. Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammed Ishfaq, and I'm a PhD student at the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering here at UD. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you on the topic, Strengthening of Bridges for a Better America. You might have heard in the news that American infrastructure is crumbling. And you cannot build a modern economy on a crumbling infrastructure. Bridges crumbles due to age, extreme weather, and overloading. Let me explain. Almost every material, every product, or machines, or even human beings in our surrounding, they have limited lifetime. And with passage of time, their performance deteriorates. And same is the case for bridge. Likewise, the extreme weather cycle, for example, the freeze and thaw cycles over the winter, uh, the summer and winter cycle over the year uh, are responsible for the expansion and contraction of the materials, which ultimately lead to disintegration and crumbling of the bridges. The third condition is overloading. Majority of our bridges are overloaded. For example, a bridge which is constructed uh, 50 years back uh, might be designed for, let's say, 30,000 vehicles per day. But now, currently, the situation might be different it would be taking more uh, vehicles for which it is designed. And this leads to overloading of the bridge and ultimately crumbling. Now, what could be the implication of this situation? Of course, a catastrophic failure. And this has already happened in the past. Uh, the recent examples are the bridge collapse at Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania, which happened last year. And the most recent example, which I think happened a couple of weeks ago, in which a bridge in the India, it was a 100-year-old bridge, was collapsed, and at least 134 people have been died. Let me share some important and alarming statistics regarding bridges. According to US Department of Transportation, there are total around 617,000 bridges in the United States. Among them, 42% are 50 years old, and more than 45,000 bridges are in poor condition. And they are classified as structurally deficient, which means it can be collapsed or it, they are at high risk. To counter this, uh, recently, the US government has passed a more than $1 trillion infrastructure bill, which include $50 billion for bridge repair rehabilitation and replacement. But the question is how these bridges will be revamped. One way is to demolish them and replace them with new one, but this is not the engineering solution to this problem. We need smart techniques and smart material to strengthen the existing bridges without taking them out of service or even without any inconvenience to the general public. Uh, let me explain from this graph how bridge strengthening works. On, on this graph, you can see on the horizontal axis, uh, we have the age of the bridge, and on the vertical axis, we have the performance of the bridge. With passage of time, the bridge performance decreases to a deficient level from its original level. In bridge strengthening, uh, what do we do? We up its performance level even uh, more than the original level. And by this way, we can extend the life and performance of the bridge. Now, what are the techniques available for bridge strengthening? These are the three common techniques used in the construction industry for strengthening of the bridges. Uh, the first one is concrete jacketing. In concrete jacketing, uh, we provide a concrete, reinforced concrete jacket. In simple words, we provide a layer of reinforced concrete around the bridge structural element, and by this way, we can increase the strength of the bridge component. But this technique is very laborious, expensive, and by this way, uh, it also increases the weight and the size of the structures. So this is not very 
good solution. The second is by using steel plates, we can bond the steel plates by using mechanical anchors to strengthen the existing structural elements. But again, this is not a good solution because steel is very uh, vulnerable to the corrosion and it's again a problem. The third one, FRP strengthening, uh, which is recently, recently been as introduced into the construction industry and this is the topic of my presentation as well and I will explain it on uh, following slides. Let me start from uh, FRP, what is FRP? FRP, fiber reinforced polymer, is nothing but just a composite of fibers and polymers. Fibers which are stronger than steel are encapsulated uh, by polymers or resins in the form of a thin fabric sheets. And these sheets thickness is around one millimeter. So that is why it is called smart material in construction industry. FRP has excellent engineering properties, like it, it, is, it has very high strength, uh, even stronger than steel. It is very lightweight as compared to uh, concrete or steel. You can say the weight is negligible. Uh, it is non-corrosive. Its installation and application procedure is easy. And the last but not the least is easy to conceal. Uh, you can just apply a paint and it can be concealed. Uh, FRP sheets can be bonded to the external surface of the bridge component by adhesive and by this way, specifically in a damage and aged and overloaded structure, you can improve and you can strengthen its performance. In this picture, you can see the, the FRP application procedure and the final uh, shape of the bridge after you apply the FRP sheets. But there is a problem associated with the use of FRP, and it is called debonding. Uh, this premature uh, debonding, and this is a undesirable mode of failure in the application of the FRP, which leads to underutilization of the strength of this expensive material. And this has happened usually because of the um, environmental condition due to moisture in the condition and when, once the beam and when the bridge is loaded, so this phenomenon has happened and by this way you cannot utilize the, uh, the, the properties of this material like uh, its high strength. Here my research uh, start. So to counter uh, this problem, so we will be, uh, work, we will introduce FRP anchors. Uh, and by using the FRP anchors, we will uh, improve the bond characteristics of these FRP sheets. And the installation and the application procedures of these anchors is not that much uh, laborious or not that much extensive. Even only by using drill machine, you can drill the hole and you can install these fibers by using uh, epoxy and by this way you can improve the performance. Now, in my case, since there is very limited uh, research studies has been available on the use of the FRP anchors. So in my research, we will check the performance of the FRP uh, by using experimental studies and numerical studies. And we will also work on the design of these anchors, like uh, these anchors should be provided in how much spacing, like what will be the length, what will be the width of these anchors. And we will also provide some design guidelines for the practicing engineers to apply this material in the field. The expected outcome of this research will be uh, to improve the performance of the FRP applications, which are currently lacking because of the debonding issue, uh, to provide a cost-effective and sustainable solution to bridge strengthening and last, to reduce the carbon footprint of the construction industry uh, is almost 50% of the grease, greenhouse gas emission uh, are only because of the concrete and steel. So by this way, we can reduce the carbon footprint. Uh, thank you so much. Any questions? Earlier in your talk, you mentioned um, 
that one of the issues with using the FRP, the bonding, is the degradation over time due to like environmental conditions and things like that. And so in your research, I'm just curious how you plan to examine something like that given that that would take a lot of time for environmental degradation to occur. Just a little bit curious about the methods. Uh, the methods will be like this, that uh, like due to the environmental condition and due to moisture, this debonding phenomenon has happened. So we will be uh, we will be using the FRP anchors. So FRP anchors is that first you have to install FRP sheets, then you uh, have to provide some drill holes in the bottom of the structures, and then you have to insert these uh, fibers. And by application of the um, epoxy, so it will bond it to the uh, FRP sheets, and by this way the debonding phenomena will mitigate it. Thank you for your talk. Um, I was curious, so you're clearly looking into anchors as a way to improve the life of um, these sheets. I'm curious if there's also different types of adhesive maybe that could be used initially that uh, would be better as well if, if that's a potential avenue of research as well. Uh, yes, it's a uh, valid question. Uh, currently, uh, before the anchors, right now, uh, when we are installing the FRP sheets, so we use adhesive. But with uh, passage of time, it has been uh, proved that these adhesives are not performing that much well. So that's why uh, even after applying these adhesives, still this debonding phenomena is happening. So that's why we are introducing the FRP anchors to further strengthen the bonding characteristics of the material. Hi, thank you so much for your very timely talk. I wanted to know um, when and where were the fiber reinforced polymers invented? Uh, fiber reinforced uh, polymers, they are, they are being utilized in the aeroplane industry, in the car industry since 1970, I think. But in the construction industry, in our civil engineering industry, they have they are recently been introduced and uh, in 1990s onwards they are introduced in the construction condition, and still a lot of research is going on on the application of the FRP material. Thanks. So expanding on that, if it's already been in the audio industry, have you looked at the solutions that they've been using for debonding? Because I mean, if it's in a car or an automotive like that, that, that FRP technology, that's obviously been in the weather. Is that something you all are looking into as well? Uh, I have not checked that, but to my understanding, uh, in that industries like aeroplane industry or car industry, they are using in different way. But in our industry, uh, in our construction industry and in civil engineering industry, we usually uh, bond it with the existing structure. So that's why this debonding phenomena is happening in this, and that's why uh, we are now doing some research on this topic. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Muhammad.